Two of them with the radiator and the fenders. Welcome back to Tempa Customs, and on this episode, we're heading to my brother's house, and we are going to go work on my sister-in-law's CJ7. Um, we're going to do a, a, like a minor tune-up on it, new spark plugs, stuff like that. Uh, we don't know when the last time it was done. They picked up this CJ7 um, in the fall, fallish, I think. I don't know. It was late, late in the year we picked up their uh, CJ7, but we're gonna go work on that. Um, there is a rat's nest of wiring in that one as well, like kind of like how Ruby was, uh, but this is mostly under the hood that we're not quite sure where and why some of the wiring is there. So we're gonna clean up some of the wiring and uh, put a new starter solenoid into it because starter solenoid um, is just, it just looks, looks pretty rough, so no reason not to replace it they're cheap enough so kind of funny though when I told my brother that he should order one I told him to get one for a old Ford um, because I'm not gonna have one for a Jeep and uh, like I said when he ordered it uh, he asked for one for an 84 CJ7 85 CJ7 sorry 85 CJ7 and they didn't have one in stock so he asked one for a late 70s early 80s F-150 and uh, they had one in stock. They're the same starter solenoid for the most part. So anyway, yeah, that's that's what we're doing. We are going to do just a quick, hopefully a quick episode on quick tune-up and you know, show you guys around another CJ7 in the family. So I am on my way to pick up spark plugs for him and the stir solenoid and then I will pick back up with you guys when I get to his house. So this is an 85 CJ7 which is again full fiberglass like Ruby and Rusty but the only bigger difference is that this has the one piece hood so the grill and everything is hood it all folds forward this way. Got a really nice interior, honestly. I like the interior in this one. But the dash. Well, but the dash is champ. Yeah, the dash has been hacked, and it's got some kind of very mangled heater box system in it that we're gonna eventually repair. Um, I'm pretty sure the guy who owned this. It's got it's got a back seat and everything. Uh, I'm pretty sure the guy who owned this before was some kind of a engineer. And he decided he would re-engineer everything. And um, he did. And uh, some of it was maybe to his liking, but not to what I think is, you know, good. So, But before we get into this, we're going to do a quick wiring check on Groot. Because right now, Groot has an electric choke. And it gets wired in right here. So every morning he has to come hook up the positive wire and drive to work. And then when he gets to work, he has to unhook the positive wire. So um, we're going to check to see if this is a switched hot wire to the ignition box here. Which I do believe it is. I believe it's how I have Ruby run. But we're going to check probably i think it's, i don't know they're they're opposites in here this one's white and this one's red this is white and that one's red so they're actually backwards um here but we're just going to check voltage on this to see if um if one of those is keyed hot if one of those is keyed hot then 
he'll just take that wire and loop it around the back, splice it into there, and when you turn the key on, the, auto, the electric choke will start to work, and then when he turns the truck off, it'll shut off like normal. So that is the plan to check that really quick. This is uh, red on the... Yeah, I'm, I'll just check them both just to see, but I have a feeling... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> Let's figure it out. There should be nothing, right? Correct. Currently, right now, there should be nothing. Let's see what your battery has in it, just so we kind of have a base. 12.3. So right now, if there's no voltages... To the black. I can't really remember if it's black or not, but... Nothing right now on that one. I think. The top one doesn't do anything. Yeah, though. top one is nothing on this one. Nothing there. Okay, try turning the key on. Click on? Yeah, fuel uh, gauge going up. Okay, so that one there. Okay, so hold on. So we go back to this wire here. Okay, turn the uh, key off. And turn the key on. Key's on? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's bad. Okay, so it's the white wire on this plug. So, the red wire here with the white wire up here. White wire on that yeah. side, which is the one I want to go into. Yeah, so take your red and go into a white. But yeah, this is, this is uh, switched. Power. went on yep so the usually in a radio there's two there's two there's, there's a in. memory wire and a on, which is a power. constant hot right and on power if I don't have an on power I can tap into the same one for my battery my radio yeah in theory yeah yeah that would be on because there's a constant on but you've got to have a fuse underneath the dashboard for radio I do but old trucks only had one so you just wire those two together. Your memory is always on. Oh wait, no, you wouldn't no, have that memory. Wouldn't work. Right, but yeah, you have to find a constant hot. Correct. Right. So if I find a constant hot or run, have to run one. Right. You could actually just run a constant hot off the battery. Which run it straight to my radio, and then I, if I have to, I the well, switch. Something's underneath there hot. Correct. Right. You have to have a fuse tied underneath there. Yeah. Probably gonna need metric. <laughs> Actually, that would probably be right. Oh, I, got it. I thought it was coming down on me. <laughs> thought it was coming down. That's not the side that do. That's gonna be redone. It's the side that do. Ground wire is off. Bolt is back in. It kind of, the plug is kind of cool. I don't know where we got this kind of plug. It's pretty cool. It's just, just like a whole smashy. It's got a whole bunch of pins on it. Wow. Yeah, I don't know where you get something like that. Wow. So even though this guy did do some weird things, this one is kind of cool. To, to remove this whole one piece hood, he's got this plug. You just undo this plug and this ground wire and the whole front end then can come off. Uh, we're gonna try to do things a little bit nicer to make it a little quicker of a disconnect as far as, right now you gotta bolt the hinges in for the top and that's kind of what holds the hood down. We're going to actually attempt to pin them so you can just, you leave this part of the hinge always up here. Um, this one, oh, the, the new radiator came in for this one, right? Yeah. So there's a new radiator for this one because this one's starting to leak 
Uh, so that would be another project. And then we do know the front timing cover seal is leaking. So basically it's the same problems that Ruby had, this one's having as well. And then that strap there keeps the hood from opening too far. Wait, is that as far as it goes? Yeah, but you could, you could probably crack the fiberglass. You're putting stress on it probably. Yep. Okay, let's get this hood all the way off. It's going to be nice. Might as well get it. Yeah. Even, even Tuesday night. I mean, that's a few bolts. Because this is, it's just these. One, two. Yeah, it's two bolts. Three. Oh, okay, but it's what, third no, one in. Not one of them. No, it's not. It's just two. Two on this side. And two on that side. Two on that side. And the radiator comes oh, out. Oh, wait a second. Is it sandwiched? It's sandwiched behind. So you have to undo it and just slide it up. Yeah, which is fine. Right. That will work. Not a big deal. That would be so fast. Yeah, and then slide the other one drop in, put the bolts back in. Sweet. But while you have it out, you might as well just remove the whole bracket, though. What? Because you want to. You might as well do the timing seal. Is it that fast? It's take this, uh, yeah, take, I'll have to bring you my tool to take the crank off, but yes, it's, it's, it's that quick. Crank pulley. Crank pulley, yeah, I have a tool for that. Yeah. But yeah, it's pretty quick. That comes off, you pull the old seal out, put the new seal in. Push the new seal in. That's it. Yeah, I will double check that, but yeah, if that's the case, oh. I do believe it pushes in from you. Should have had you bring that over, I would have yeah. done that. Yeah, well, I can, I can bring it over this weekend. Wow, but, okay, yeah. well, I like that. Awesome. <laughs> Pulled off the old starter solenoid. Um, there were just wires hanging off of it. Not This is like not even connected. The only one that had a wire to the small terminal was this one, which I do believe is the start solenoid off the uh, ignition, which we'll check. And then the big terminals here. But there were just hot wires hanging off. And so we removed all that. And we're going to put on this new, which is the actual proper starter solenoid. I don't know if it's actually going to need both the S and the I terminal because this has an HEI distributor. I should probably check that fact. But I don't think so. I think HEIs can run off of 12 volts all the time. But and it doesn't matter because he doesn't have a resistor wire in here anyway. So, so there's these wires here that go into this loom. They're a cut. Um, that is lovely. Lovely. To another relay down here, which who knows where that goes. Um, that goes to the starter solenoid. Um, got wires up. We got another relay sitting up there. I'm probably for the fan, maybe. Which is only running one. And then... And kicks on and off when it feels like it. Right. And then we think those red and white wires, or the red and green wire over there, come out over here, but are cut off. Then we got a blue wire coming here not sure where that one goes and we got a bundle of wires here now these i do believe are if you did the the nutter bypass which is pretty common these are all the accessory wires that you don't use but this looks kind of cheesy and i think we should clean this up a little bit we've got um got connections and splices down here but we got another I don't even know what I don't even know what this thing is. What is this? What is this box? It's got a a wire to it. Oh wait. Washer pump maybe. It might be the washer pump. We've got this contraption up here, which we're not a hundred percent sure of, I think. It goes over here. I think this is a uh what do you call it? Um an oil Oh, what do they call them when you, when you when you collect the oil? PVC? No, no, no. The vent? Yeah, but it's a vent. But there's an actual term for that where they put like that 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 jug to collect the oil, and they gotta drain them periodically. Drains back from the engine, doesn't it? Yeah, this thing here though, I do believe this is again. This has all like been modified, like weird JB Weld, and but this I do believe is sitting on top of the P PV PCV. Wow. I think this is sitting on top of the PCV vent tube where it would normally have a, a vent. And this tube goes into here, which I think collects oil coming out of the... How does it collect it from the bottom end? Doesn't make sense either. It yeah, but this doesn't go anywhere. Close. So you got this thing here just kind of draining off into the ground. Well, it's on the top of that. Right. So it would have to get to the top of that right. by being pumped. In. And then you got this one coming out the bottom... <laughs> 
that goes back into the oil pan. Again, this is some this is some engineering that AMC did not, did not do. <laughs> we also have this valve. Yeah, we have that one. We're not, that one, not sure. That doesn't connect to anything, so we're not quite nope. sure what it that one is. It does have the uh, barbed fitting on the bottom yeah. to nowhere. <laughs> it's not, and it's welded to that frame, so that one's not coming off anytime soon. Right? How this do you is, get your oil pressure? Uh, I, right off problem. this, yep. Right should, spot? There should be a little thing, it is. a little brass thing at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, it is. Is it got the little the rollover valve on it still? You do not have a rollover valve on yours, which I don't think, I may have put my rollover valve back in. So there's, that's where the oil pressure comes out of. Um... Yeah, so we're going to go through and kind of test some of these wires. Like, okay, so this blue wire here comes out of the uh, comes out of the firewall over there, and that comes directly off the ignition. This guy here, I am not sure. Is that what this is? There's a fuse. No. Okay, so look at how tiny this little wire is. And it goes to a... 20, yeah, that wire cannot handle 20 amps. I can already tell you that right now. <laughs> that wire cannot hand to handle 20 amps. And then it goes into a much larger wire, which probably can handle 20 amps. Okay, so this goes here. Blue wires go up into the loom. Now, the blue wires could come out here. Um, Blower motor. Your modified blower motor. No, inside. Oh. I wonder if that's what runs to that. We're going to have to... We have to pull the fuse on it see if your blow motor comes on. We can do that, too. Yeah. But I'm not, I don't know if we're concerned about that right now. Got this wire here that doesn't go anywhere off of the distributor. This might... Wait a second. Wait a second. Doesn't that's matter. a hot wire, I have a feeling. Really? Um, it's connected to this one. it doesn't one. go anywhere. It goes up in here. No, there's only one red wire. Well, yeah, they're all spliced together right here. Oh, my. I'm feeling this one's hot. So we probably should trim that back at least so it doesn't touch anything. Okay. And that's a, what, is, what does this ground go to? Oh, that's, that's, that's hot. No, that's, that's, your charging, that's your charging wire. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Oh. It comes off of here. So that goes on the hot side, right? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So. That does not look like fuel line. This is a sweet <laughs> little splice right here. Not quite sure what that is. That's not awesome, though. Wow, that's that's sweet. Okay. Well, let's... First of all, let's check these wires here and see if they are a... Can we just run continuity? Yeah, let's run continuity through and see if they continue and if you didn't pick it up before this this hacked piece of plate to cover the air filter is is just interesting we're like i'm not quite sure why i mean there's sharp edges of metal on it and we're we're, we're not sure on that but that's how it came so anyway like ruby this Jeep needs a lot of loving because it's uh, someone just did a, did a job on it. Okay. okay. So you take one of these probes. And go to red. I'm just for right now I'm just gonna touch anything to see if it's hot anywhere else. Which is or not hot, but continuity. Nope, nothing there. Go to here. That's that wire. Okay. Go to the green. Don't seem to be any continuity anywhere else. And it's that wire there. So that can be removed sometime, somehow. Yeah, I would just get a pair of side cutters and cut them as short as you can to the um to the, to, the, to the wiring loom. These belong to that side though. Wait, this guy here is switched hot red and white to... I don't remember. I'll forget my book. 
this blue wire, this relay here, again, we have a relay sitting here that has wires going down into something. need to pull this harness, clean it up, like I did with, well, it, you've got this whole fuse panel over here, too. Is that even wired in? Is that doing anything? All these wires underneath it. Oh, there are? Okay. Why do Coming you have a, from... Why do you have an accessory fuse panel? Like, you've got one right here. What do you need that one for? It's pretty fancy, too. Whatever yeah. this little... Yeah. Yeah, we need to come through here and just. I, sh I should. I should pull. I, I would love to get rid of. I should pull the. I've got the harness from Ruby. Uh, Rusty, the front harness. I should just bring it over here, and we can just replace the whole front harness. Yeah, because I don't think this is safe either. And clean it up. Did you want to clip those other green? Yeah, wires I, wish, I just want to cut them short so they're not. Um, exposed and looking bad. Okay, those are out, or at least cut short. Where does this guy go? It's this. What, what, what end is on there? That probably is old distributor wiring. Because it would have just pushed onto the screw. Instead of putting a, 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 an eyelet on... Yeah, they guess not, not in the they guess go around the end of the bolt. Coil. Probably coil wires. Maybe. That's this. Yeah, it just goes up underneath all this. There's a little thin... It's right here. Yep. Where yep. does it go to? This guy here comes down, and it's purple and green over here. Is that the same one? I do believe so. It is green and there's a splice right there. Is it just a clean up? That's oh. pink. This guy right here, right? Way up underneath here. It's still yeah. green. Green and red. And green and red here. Oh. Yeah. What? It's just so tiny, and then it goes to a huge... There's a reason why Jeep ran such a large purple wire. Yeah, but it, it's not being used at all, I guess is what I'm well, saying. Well, right, not anymore, but it was at one point. I should have brought my book. I could have at least What does that go to? It just goes into the fuse panel. Can those be clipped? I don't know what they are. I mean, they could well, they're be. They're not doing anything. Yeah, but should they be doing something? Okay. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't clip them yet. All right. Yet. Something else that this Jeep has already gotten that is a good upgrade. Uh, Rusty will probably get and Ruby is this steering box brace. Um, it's much bigger metal on this brace compared to the factory one. And uh, made some tabs in there to hold it. It's just a much nicer piece on this one. Take spark plugs out. Yeah, there's just so much these, stuff. These by. The valve cover? Yeah. They're not bad. You yeah. can get them, yeah. Uh, Omex does them. Uh, a couple other companies do them. Marketplace, sometimes you can find them. Nope, those need to be replaced. Ooh, I don't. That's a weird looking plug. Grab your auto lights. That is a strange, long looking plug. Oh, yeah, there. The electrode is worn on an angle. Wow. Oh, I guess they're the same. Yeah, yeah they do the same thing. New ones are. Yeah, it's just weird how long the porcelain sticks out. It is. Ooh, that thing looks... It's worn on an angle pretty bad. Oh my gosh. So yeah, the gap... Look at the amount of electrodes sticking out of the porcelain. Yeah. Oh, well, that's just... Because there's more porcelain on this one. This has got you taller... Por yeah, you can see. Oh. It's definitely got more taller porcelain. So not a big deal, but... Yeah, we'll put them in. I don't want to get... Remember a gapage? 
I don't remember gapping on these. This is number four, and again, it's hard to, there you go, there's a good view of it, number four there. Um, but it looks to have fuel around here, so I don't know if this is leaking around, kind of looks like it's been leaking around the gasket. Not, no oil, I mean, not, not anything significant, I would say oil, it's, it looks fine. Might be burning a little rich, but even then... Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Might be burning a little rich, but not awful. This, but this fuel smells like fuel anyway. So, well, again, yeah, we're not finding anything majorly wrong, but changing these out is gonna definitely increase how well it runs. We just pulled number five, and this is an auto light plug, which is different than the champions that are in the other one um and it looks a slightly wet when was the last time this thing ran though well, when was the last time you were over when we ran it so it's been a month yeah so damp would be weird for something that's been sitting a month but you never know distributor cap is back on we had to remove it to get this wire out okay plugs are in she should fire up nice and in quick again, we had to put the starter solenoid back in. So starter solenoid got right here. If you go back, um, I have a video on understanding this. If I haven't already said that, go back a couple episodes. One of the actually one of the first episodes on Ruby trying to get her started. I go through and explain how on a normal Jeep this works. So. Tighten those suckers down. If we're gonna do this right. Which side's uh, S now? S is over here. Okay. So this should be your starter, should go to this side. But because we're not doing it. Wait, my starter, so should be that, hot over here? Hot from the battery should go to that side in theory, if if it's if you're gonna wire it correctly. So hot should battery from over here. Correct. Gotta go like that. Oh, it's easy. Nice. Cut this shorter and Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that might sneak through there. You think? It might sneak through there from the bottom up. Okay, battery is in. You're not gonna get it super crazy tight just because there's no like no spring load, but it'll be enough to keep it from falling out. Yeah. See, you should start right up. Yeah, it hasn't started in a while. A choke in this? There has to be a choke. There is a choke, it is electric. Hold on. Okay, right now you're not choked at all. Oh, I think we found out this isn't working. Hold on. I think as we found out before. Okay, now. Okay. 
not working. So this is this is the next issue. I'll probably get done this hopefully this this weekend because those are gonna be warm. She's uh Yeah, the radiator's kinda leaking. It just kinda it just just sits in this little pond down here. All the way over. But uh yeah it's That's the next major repair. And like I said, the um, timing cover gasket is also leaking. So he's gonna do that with the radiators out. You might as well do it at the same time, it's just as easy. So uh, hopefully that'll get done this weekend. I do believe it slips in from the outside. I have to double check. I, I, I have a timing cover at home, I can check. I can look at, I can look at Rusty's timing cover. Well, the weather started coming in and it started to actually get kind of cold and uh, we, were, we were pretty much done with what we were doing. Um, there was nothing groundbreaking or earth shattering in that video whatsoever. It was more of a um, video just to get you guys to be able to see another uh, Jeep that we've added to the fleet and um, see some of the odds and ends that um, are going to need to be done uh, to get it to a... A cleaner state that one drives we actually drove that one home um, but it's just more of a get to know this new CJ7 video um, there's definitely be more videos on it as there's a lot of work that needs to be done on it as again cleaning up wiring removing things that don't need to be there anymore um, but those are for um, future episodes so with that, we will end our video. Um, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope everybody has a great week.